this is a brief disclaimer. The following video you are about to watch is not the official trailer for Godzilla 2014, but guess what, ladies and gentlemen? You ain't gotta rely on fuckers like me anymore. You don't gotta go searching the internet for, for random YouTube channels that may probably not have the leaked trailers and the leaked footage of the Comic-Con shit, any of that shit. You don't gotta do that anymore. You could just go on YouTube and without any constituents, type in Godzilla trailer and it will pop up. It will pop up. It'll present itself to you in glorious HD by the official makers of the film. But, this video ain't the trailer. But if you want to go find the trailer, you don't have to look very far because you can go here. You can go here. You can go there. You can go there. You can go anywhere and find this trailer and experience the glory. For ladies and gentlemen of the internet, I am Zazubar. And the king has returned. <laughs> Everybody, I am Zazubar and welcome to a long overdue video for today ladies and gentlemen we are going to be doing the thing that we should have been doing long long ago a thing that was promised us over four fucking years ago here on YouTube as I talked about it as my young dumb self today ladies and gentlemen we are going to be talking about the official Honest to God trailer for the Legendary Pictures reboot of Godzilla coming out on May 16th, 2014. It's only a couple of months away, and oh my god is this trailer fucking late, but we'll get to that. So yes, ladies and gentlemen, today we are going to do something I probably should have done days ago. We're going to talk about the official Godzilla trailer. Uh, the reason why this video is over a week late... Well, the big reason was because, A, I was in a catatonic state after watching the trailer and being overwhelmed by its awesomeness and by the fact that Godzilla's fucking back. But the more logical reason, I guess, is that I was waiting for the opportunity to discuss the trailer with my fellow Sons of Sarazawa in the fourth edition of our ongoing series, World War G in which myself and the Sons of Sarazawa discuss all the latest news coming out of Godzilla 2014 and have a big old war about what it, whether it's good, whether it's bad, what it means, what it doesn't mean, and whether or not this movie's actually going to be good. But, which I'm confident in saying it probably will be, but we'll see. Uh, but uh, I wanted to wait for them because it made the most sense to do to get all of our feelings on wax at once rather than do a bunch of independent videos and then come together to do one giant one. It's, it's a little weird, so it kind of made more sense to do it as one group and then if you wanted to, go off and do it on your own. So that's what we decided to do and that's what we did. So if you want to hear all of the Sons of Sarazawa's thoughts on the Godzilla trailer, you don't got to watch this video. You can go over to Adam... Whoa, excuse me. You can go over to Adam Noyce's channel and watch World War G4, another legendary Godzilla chat in which we discuss the trailer. But we go into a lot more detail. This video is just going to be my thoughts on the trailer. We talk about a lot more than just the trailer. We talk about the MutoResearch.net website building up to the trailer. We talk about the new photos. We talk about what's been going on. We talk about everything. So... If you want to hear all of that and not just my reactions to the trailer, go ahead and watch that video again. You can find that on Adam Noyce's channel. But if you just want to hear my thoughts, stick around and we will discuss that. That video is three hours long, so yeah, you better knock out a block of time where you can sit down and watch it. Um, 
so these are just going to be my thoughts on the trailer. So, uh, now that the World War G advertisement is out of the way, again, go check that out on Adam Noyce's channel. You, I'll put a link down in the description, maybe put one on the screen. We'll see what Future Bill is feeling. But definitely go ahead and look in the description for a link to World War G4. Um, okay. So, let's get into the meat of this fucker. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's finally talk about something we should have talked about months ago. Let's get into the official 2014 Godzilla trailer. So, let's, let's clear the elephant out of the room first and talk about the major thing. This trailer, not much different than the second leaked trailer that came out, I'm gonna say... Oh, it only came out like two weeks after the or after the first big leak trailer. Um, I guess early November, maybe. So there was another leaked Godzilla trailer that followed the big major one everybody talked about, and I did a video on that uh, a couple months ago, um, in which I discussed a how shitty the quality of the video that was used to record it was. It wasn't just the trailer; it was somebody recording it through their cell phone, and worse off, recording recording it vertically. Um, so mainly that video was just me bitching about that. Um, but more than that, I was also talking about how, um, I was confused as to what exactly the trailer was, whether it was a, the trailer that was coming, whether it was the trailer that was shown at Comic-Con that year, not the previous year, like the first one was, as to exactly what the hell what we were looking at was, but, uh, more than that, I mean, I talked about how I liked it, um, so, but, I mean, the big question was, what the fuck were we watching? What were we looking at? Was this the previous Comic-Con trailer? Was this the teaser trailer coming up? What was it? And I speculated that what it was was kind of like the teaser trailer for the teaser trailer, and I also talked about how it was a little bit unusual because it seemed to be incomplete. Like, something was missing from the trailer, because it used a lot of footage from that first test, like, sizzle reel Godzilla trailer, or mood piece, as it's being called now, from Comic-Con 2012. Um, and I, I, I speculated that it probably wouldn't be used in the new trailer, because uh, Gareth Edwards talked about how that design for Godzilla wasn't finalized, and they, you know, they, they wanted to finalize it before putting the trailer out. Um, which is probably why the trailer took as long to come out as it did, because <clears throat> there's been a, a lot of recent articles coming out of Legendary Pictures about Gareth Edwards talking about how just now he's starting to see the real star of the movie Godzilla take shape in, in the film, because they shot all the, you know, the live action stuff first and they go in later with the special effects, and it's a Godzilla movie so there's a lot of special effects. Um... So he talked about how, oh my god, I'm finally seeing the the creature forming. Uh, that being said, let's address the other big elephant in the room. Oh my god, is this trailer late. I'm going to draw a major point of comparison to Man of Steel here. Because Man of Steel and Godzilla, two huge franchise movies. You got Superman and you got Godzilla both being rebooted for American audiences by the same company. Um, you know, Superman debatably bigger than Godzilla. Well, not debatably. He is bigger than Godzilla, at least in this country. So, you know, it, it kind of makes sense that there's going to be more build-up to the release of Man of Steel. But before Man of Steel came out, we knew a lot about at least what the movie was going to look like before any kind of trailer, we even knew what the movie was about. We had set photos, we knew what the Superman suit looked like, we knew it was going to be the origin, we knew the, the cast and crew, we knew the story. Um, but we didn't, that was, you know, that was pretty much, you know, that was long beforehand. I remember doing a video with Gorzard over, over two years ago, I think now, at, at this point, um, in which we talked about the, all we knew about Man of Steel. And... We did it with Godzilla, too, but we knew significantly less about Godzilla. Which I guess makes sense. Godzilla was coming out a year after Man of Steel. But Man of Steel had a teaser trailer that played with the Dark Knight Rises the year before. Um, the year bef Over a year before Man of Steel hit theaters, there was a trailer that came out for the Dark Knight, that, during the Dark Knight Rises, and everybody freaked out over it because it was a pretty good trailer. And we all thought, hey... Maybe they'll put 
the Godzilla trailer here too because the trailer just came out of Comic Con. And there was no such luck. The Man of Steel trailer played it played well, but no Godzilla trailer. I guess it made sense. It was still two years in the pike, so it kind of would be weird for the trailer to come out. Um, so we thought, okay, next year. Man, during Man of Steel, there's got to be a Godzilla trailer, right? I mean, it just makes sense. Like, what else are they going to put there? I mean, come on, it's Godzilla. you gotta put the, you got to put it at least in front of the Man of Steel trailer. One year later, knowing a lot about Man of Steel, Man of Steel comes out. No trailer for Godzilla. Trailer for Pacific Rim, trailer for other legendary movies that nobody cares about except for The Hobbit, no Godzilla. Oh, um, okay, well, Pacific Rim is coming out in a couple weeks, so, I mean, that would make more sense. It's another legendary movie, but more than that, it's a kaiju movie, so it kind of makes more sense. I mean, it's, it's got to be there, right? Godzilla has got to be before Pacific Rim. Pacific Rim comes out. I remember walking to the movie theater being filled with excitement that, oh, oh my god, this is going to be it. The Godzilla trailer is going to be here. It's got to be. It's a year away. They've got to put the trailer here. No Godzilla trailer. Pacific Rim comes out, does what it does. No Godzilla trailer. Hobbit trailer, other shit nobody cares about. No Godzilla wow what a slap in the face okay so well slap, slap in the face is too hard let's put our cards on the table here so you are going to market a movie called godzilla rebooting a character who hasn't been seen on any movie screen for 10 years almost 10 years and hasn't been seen on an american movie screen in what would it be 15 years 15 years since Godzilla 2000 came out. In, no, 14 in state time. It came out in 99 in Japan. That's a long fucking time. Long time. And you look at Godzilla. Godzilla is not an American character. Um, Godzilla has a lot of, he's known in America quite well. That's certainly true. But Godzilla isn't a character that not only not only does not everybody know about, but not everybody is familiar with what Godzilla is. You know what I mean? Like Godzilla is a concept that everybody kind of knows the basics of, but some people, some Americans still confuse Godzilla with King Kong. You know, when you say who's Godzilla, you're like, oh, that's that big gorilla, right, that climbs the building. No, that's the one he fought. Um. It is ridiculous. Uh, so, uh, I mean, the fact of the matter is that when you're doing a reboot of Godzilla, it really needs, you really need to hit people with the proper marketing. And not only do you, do you need to hit them with the proper marketing, you need to do it well-timed. Um, and I feel like the marketing that we were getting is a little bit, slow like Godzilla is only a couple months away from being released and you still run into some people who would know the character and you go oh, there's a Godzilla movie coming coming out they're like what there's a new Godzilla movie coming out really when's that coming out couple couple months really oh my god I, I, I would have expected it to be coming I would have expected to hear something about it and you should have um and then you finally get to the release of the trailer and you're like it's a couple months away. They've been keeping it so fucking secret for years. It's gotta be something big, right? Like, what they show us in this couple months away from release has got to be life-changing. This is going to change Godzilla forever. And it kind of did that a little bit. Not really. So the trailer comes out last week, and everybody loves it. It's fucking insanely successful on the internet. It was arguably the biggest pop culture thing that happened last week. Um, so it was a big deal, but then you look at the trailer itself and let me just say this. The trailer is excellent. It is a fantastic trailer. Well, let me rephrase that. It's a fantastic teaser trailer and that's really at the core of what it is. It's a, it's a teaser trailer. It's a tone piece. It's not telling you anything about the fucking story. We still have no conception of what this movie is about. Um, 
Which is definitely a testament to keeping the film a secret. Because, I mean, I'm a huge Godzilla fan. I follow every piece of news that comes out about this film. I still have no idea what the fuck is it's about. Like, all I know is Godzilla's in it, and it's got something called Muto in it. And I know some of the casting sources. I don't know what how that all, what that all means, how it's all going to come together. Now, I want to find out by watching the movie, but it would also be kind of nice to be able to go in with a general gist of what you're going to get. That's what a trailer is for. And there's two kinds of trailer. There is a story trailer, like the second trailer for Man of Steel, and then there's the teaser or a mood trailer, or a tone trailer. And that's what this is. That's what the first trailer for Man of Steel was. That first teaser trailer for Man of Steel was also excellent because it set this tone. It set this tone that, like, this is a very different Superman. We're focusing on a different angle. We're going to do it with a little bit more of a focus on Clark, on the Clark Kent or origin stuff as opposed to the Superman stuff. So, you know, that kind of told people what, what you could expect, what, how the movie was going to feel. And then you get into Godzilla. And that kind of trailer should have come out either last May, a year before the movie would have come out, or with Man of Steel or with Pacific Rim. Giving people a taste of, here's what's coming in a year. And there was no such luck. None whatsoever. And now finally we got the Godzilla trailer, and it's a tone piece. It's nothing more. It's a fucking tone piece. It tells you what you need to know about what this movie's going to look like and how it's going to feel, and that's all. And it should be more than that at this point. I mean, I mean, maybe I'm coming off as whiny, and the fact that I'm, I have a cold doesn't help at all. Um, but, uh, like, oh, this guy's a little bitch fucking bitching about the Godzilla trailer. I'm not bitching about the Godzilla trailer. The Godzilla trailer itself was fucking amazing. I'm more complaining about where it was placed. And to, to be, this is to be said as well. The build-up to the trailer was also excellent. Everything they've done is excellent. It's just a little late. Um, but let's, let's save that for another time. Ultimately, these are all very early judgment calls on Legendary's marketing marketing department. And maybe maybe they're unfair calls because, you know, the Godzilla movie itself, months away from release, we have no idea how it's gonna do. And let's let's face facts. This trailer was extremely popular. Every major entertainment news outlet picked it up and said, Oh my god, Godzilla's back. Look at this. Now we all we as Godzilla fans were like, You're you're a little late to the party too, because we knew about this years ago. Um but they were like, oh my god, Godzilla's a thing? Look at this, look at this. Um, so, there's definitely something to be said for that. Again, the marketing itself was great. It is excellent marketing. It's still a little bit late. This kind of awareness should have been brought up months ago. That's my point here. I'm not saying that the awareness that they're bringing up is bad. It's excellent. It's more than we could have ever hoped for as Godzilla fans. It's a little late, though. The concern is, and this is a this is a okay classic psychological theory. When you study for a test, if you cram the night before and leave yourself no time between your studying and the test, you're not going to remember that much. There is not enough time for that information to sink in. If you study about, or if you study in small increments a week before and then don't study at all the night before you're probably going to remember it better because it had time to sink into your brain and you had time to kind of put those concepts together yourself. With, in, in movies, this works the same way. If you implant what a movie is going to be in somebody's mind months before, what it's going to be like, whether or not they want to go see it, they're going to be able to put things together in their mind that will, that will get them more excited for it as you build up to the movie's release. The closer you do it to the movie's release, people care less. There's no build-up. There's no anticipation. So that's really my concern here, is that, you know, there there's awareness, but the level of the awareness is my concern. That there's, there isn't enough, and that the interest that it's built up in people is a little bit too late. But, with that being said, I apologize for that 17 minutes of bitching. Wow. 
Um, but it's something that needed to be said. It's something we talked about in World War G4. I wanted to talk about here a little bit. Um, so with that being said, let's talk about the trailer itself. So it's a it's late, but as I said, it is excellent. Now, what does this trailer do right? Well, first things first, it is incredibly atmospheric. And that's and, and that's something that I never expected from not only this Godzilla movie, but any Godzilla movie. Because there really hasn't been an insanely atmospheric Godzilla movie since 54. Gojira is an insanely atmospheric piece. But every Godzilla movie since then has been a lot more of a sci-fi film. And while there's definitely a distinctive tone to a Godzilla movie, and there's a certain feel to a Godzilla movie, at the end of the day, you know, there isn't like an unsettling, there isn't an unsettling tone to the film. It's always much more of a, of a of an action kind of tone. This insane level of of a large scale. This Godzilla trailer is unsettling, absolutely unsettling. And I think it's debatable whether or not that's been achieved and succeeded in since the original Gojira, because you look at like something like the Return of Godzilla from '84, tried desperately to retain those aspects of the original. And it was fairly successful at it. There are some legitimately unsettling scenes in Godzilla 84. I think my favorite is twofold. One, the submarine scene is excellent. Uh, where you don't see Godzilla at all. It's just those Russians in the sub talking about there's something coming towards us. And it's not a whale and it's not a submarine. And we can't hit it with... And the torpedoes we fired at it had no effect. Excellent, excellent scene. Second one, when Godzilla attacks the nuclear reactor. There's this great build-up where the entire setting is covered in fog, and you don't see Godzilla walking towards the reactor. And you don't see him until he clears through the fog, and he emerges, and this guy sees him, and he's like... And he freaks out, and that's when you see Godzilla. Great, great scene. Um, I'll say this. My prob probably biggest reaction to this trailer and how I'm perceiving this movie before it comes out, I'm getting a really deep Godzilla 84 impression from this trailer. And the aspects that really stuck out to me as being distinctly Godzilla 84 <clears throat> came from, first of all, the biggest, probably the biggest thing about the trailer that everybody remembers is that opening shot, the halo jump, in which... Um, all of the soldiers are deployed down into, into destroyed San Francisco to go deal with something, some kind of situation. They seem to not know what it is, and they're descending down. They've got the flares running in order so they can see each other. Um, and everybody, everybody's been talking about that scene because they're like, what are they going to do? Are they going to fight Godzilla? I mean, they're, they're fucking paratroopers. I think the, the idea is more of they're going down to help people who are stuck in the city. And they're, because they don't have guns on them, they're just rocking military gear. I presume they're more disaster relief than they are combat soldiers, but they're probably there for that as well. Um, but to quote Godzilla Half Century War, don't bring a gun to a Godzilla fight. Um, anyway, so they're descending down, and there's this fucking amazing shot that is really visually interesting, where they're kind of descending down through this gaping hole in the clouds, and... It's this kind of gray overcast, and the cloud layer underneath is fucking red, almost like blood red. And everybody has been saying it, it looks like a descent into hell. And I totally agree with that. I think that that's definitely what Gareth Edwards was going for. It looks like they're descending into hell. And that's reaffirmed when you see the fucking skyline of San Francisco completely ablaze. And you're just like, what the fuck caused this? Now you know what caused it. You know what you're watching. Um, But they descend down and they descend through the cloud layer and there's this great... And I talked about this in the leaked trailer because, again, this is essentially the same trailer as the leaked trailer. Um, It's a little bit better. Not only in terms of quality, but it shows a little more. So, it, so they descend down. And they enter the area, and you cut to a perspective of one of the soldiers. 
and you see something start to erupt from the clouds. And you see all of your soldiers in front of you with their flares. And one of them is dangerously close to something angular erupting from the clouds. And that something is moving. As it moves more and slowly moves forward, it reveals itself. It's fucking Godzilla. Gigantic spines walking on two legs, fully upright, gigantic Godzilla. And one of them fucking crashes into Godzilla. It's not really made a big deal out of in the trailer, but you can clearly see one of the soldiers hit Godzilla on the way down. And you're like, that guy's dead. Um, it is an amazing shot. It is fucking spot on for a new Godzilla. And why I thought of 84 was because they seem to be taking the same tact with their story and with their presentation of the modern Godzilla that 84 took. 84 was like, we're going to take the exact same character and throw him into modern day and say, okay, here's how we would react. That seems to be the idea of this new Godzilla. And I think it's a great fucking idea. That is one of my favorite, absolute favorite ideas in all of Godzilla, is Godzilla's impa impact on the world around him. Godzilla vs. Biollante is one of my favorite Godzilla movies, and that movie's all about how modern society, modern po politicians, um, scientists react to Godzilla's presence. And that seems to be the entire focus of this movie. Um, th and that shot is kind of immortalizing it, because it's like, these soldiers are reacting to Godzilla, and it's just an incredible shot. It builds up so much tension, so much dread, so much, it's fucking scary. It is scary. And one thing I did not expect from this film, I think I even talked about it in an early video of mine, was that Godzilla has never really been a horror movie. It's always been kaiju, it's always been science fiction. But Godzilla never really gets into the horror genre except for the bare bones essentials of being a monster. And I think the, the most horrific of all the films is the original. That being said, Gareth Edwards made Godzilla scary. There is something distinctly unsettling, distinctly terrifying about this new Godzilla. I don't know what it is. It's, I mean, it's, it, part of it is the way it's shot. And I think the big thing, oh my god, the biggest thing, is that these soldiers cannot fucking go back. That when they're descending down into the city, being destroyed by Godzilla, they don't have fucking a grappling hook like Batman to fucking cascade back up. They have to go down. They have no choice. And they're crashing right into the midst of this gigantic monster. It's spectacular. And insanely, insanely unsettling. Um, easily the best part of the trailer. I, I mean, I think my favorite part, hands down, is just the ability to see Godzilla from a bird's eye view so clearly. Because it fucking, it settles one of my biggest fears about this movie. And that was how Godzilla was going to walk. Because nothing about the, you know, anything we know about it has reaffirmed how Godzilla is going to walk. And I'm a big stickler for Godzilla walking upright, dragging his tail. Because, fuck science, um, Godzilla's character, the classic iconic image of Godzilla is that distinctive two-legged monster dragging his tail. And it looks like, from this particular angle, that they're going to retain that in this new movie. Um... And I mean, just my comments on the fucking final design, it looks really, really good. Uh, Super DM in World War G4 said something that I think is extremely intelligent and true, and that is that Godzilla designs, if anything else, have to match the movie. And as long as the Godzilla design works in context of the movie, there's really not much we can complain about. And it seems like in this new Godzilla that this design is going to work for this particular story. At least what we know. And it, it just, as long as this particular Godzilla design reflects 
how the story is going to play, then I'm totally cool with whatever they do. And based and, and based on that, this Godzilla looks spectacular. I love the, I love the spines especially. Those spines work pr almost perfectly for a modern Godzilla. Um, nice and angular. They're not the classic maple leaves, which I do prefer. But they're very, very Godzilla. They 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 look kind of like they were pulled right off the 2000 suit. They're a little bit smaller than the 2000 suit, and, and I I say almost perfect because in my opinion these spines are a little small. Um, but they're almost perfect because they're in three rows, long rows down each, and they've got that classic multi-spike Godzilla Godzilla shape, and. Despite looking like the 2000 suit, which was a departure, it still has the elements of what makes Godzilla Godzilla. And I think if you're going to look to any Godzilla movie, any two Godzilla movies for inspiration on how you reboot Godzilla, you look to Godzilla 84 and you look to Godzilla 2000. And this looks like it's pulling drastically from each. Because another thing, um, two things that really strike me about what this story seems like it's going to be is kind of like the the not only the military you know the people in these cities reacting to Godzilla but also it seems to be the uh, the reaction by by the environment to Godzilla's presence and what I'm referring to mainly is the idea that Godzilla is an atomic life form as the Godzilla encounter called him back in the summer and One idea I've always loved in Godzilla movies is that Godzilla cells since they're atomic and and since they've got a closely connect a, a close connection to cancer cells because they're atomic That they spread like fucking wildfire. This is why Godzilla re is able to regenerate um, damaged cells and why he's practically invincible is that you know, his, his cells are so volatile. And it makes sense that if Godzilla's cells are, you know, scraped off his body and interact with the environment, there's your explanation for a bunch of a bunch of enemies for Godzilla to fight right there. And I think that's what they're doing with this new movie. Because, you know, the promotional material for the film, some of the things we know about it is we know about these creatures called mutos, which seem to be insect-like almost vaguely destroyer like creatures based on their size and based on they look kind of like giant spiders um definitely insect like and uh it, it seems like these creatures are going to be directly connected to godzilla himself which i'm a big fan of i think the best godzilla enemies are the ones that relate to him directly and it seems like that's what they're doing here now we're a little bit confused on what exactly to call these creatures because up until about a week ago, we were calling them mutos, which we presume stood for mutations. But now we know that there is an organization in this new universe called Muto. And if that's the case, the name of the creatures probably aren't going to be mutos. So we'll have to wait and see on that on that front of things, but uh Um Whatever the creatures are and whatever they're called, I am definitely intrigued to see whether or not or how they du directly relate back to Godzilla. Um, that being said, what else do I want to talk about with this trailer? I mean, it, it just looks so fucking spectacular. The creepy tone, the dark, dark visuals. This is clearly going to be a very dark movie. Which I'm all fucking for. I'm all for a Godzilla movie that takes Godzilla back to his dark roots. Godzilla is going to be a destructive force of nature again. Oh, I'm so excited. Um, I mean, it just, it looked, they got Godzilla right. They fucking got him right. Um, I think really the final thing I want to talk about is that final shot. And I want to talk about the roar a little bit because it's kind of been stirring up some controversy so let's talk about the final images of the trailer and uh the the roar so the final image awesomely is or final images is a bunch of people reacting to something big they're just like what the fuck is that 
And then they cut to footage from the first Comic-Con trailer in which Godzilla turns around away from the camera. You see a good lot of him. And then he looks up and roars to the heavens. And then you see the title pop up, Godzilla. And it's fucking spectacular. Um, Godzilla looks absolutely amazing. The one thing I like a lot about this shot is that it shows Godzilla's size. I mean, his hand sways past the camera. It's gigantic. Rubble is falling off of him. His hand sways around. He turns, again, clearly standing upright. And then his head clicks up and he goes, Oh, God. Um, again, Godzilla looks spectacular, especially the head. The head looks like it was taken right off the fucking... 90s Godzilla suit. Uh, like, right off Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah. Um, that being said, um, let's talk about the roar. Because the roar has been stirring up controversy, but also a lot of praise. Everybody, everybody who's not, like, a hard, hardcore Godzilla fan has been saying, oh my god, that's the exact, that's the fucking exact roar. Yeah, it's similar. Um, but, as Godzilla fans, we all know, this is a Godzilla roar we've never heard before. That this is kind of like a, their interpretation of the Godzilla roar. Um, so how is their interpretation? Well, it's fine. It works, I guess. I think my biggest problem with it, or at least it was originally, um was the latter half. Because the first part's fine. The first part is like the exact Godzilla roar. The whole high-pitched high pitch scree. But the unk, you know, scree unk, the un part, sorry for my Godzilla live audio theater, Um, that part of it, they've played with. They've made it sound very, very deep. And I think the best point of comparison is that it kind of sounds like a whale call almost at least in its, in its presentation it sounds like it's coming through water um and i think why that bothers me is that it seems to conflict with the beginning of the roar almost like high-pitched classic godzilla our interpretation it seems very very conflicting and it doesn't sound like a naturally occurring sound, which I guess makes sense, because Godzilla's not a naturally occurring animal. That being said, I think my... I, I'm going to say what I originally said when the, when the first leaked trailer came out. It sounds a little bit like an audio... Let's say you're an audio major in college, which I go to school with, and your assignment is, okay, I'm going to give you the Godzilla roar... For your assignment, you have to come up with your own version of it. It sounds like an audio student fucking around with audio levels to try and make the roar sound different. And I'm not crazy about that. It kind of sounds prototypey. At least it did in that first leak trailer. How does it sound now? It sounds a little better. It sounds a little bit more natural. There's definitely a mo there's definitely more of a more of a cohesion between the different levels of the sound. And now that we hear it in context of the official trailer, it kind of sounds a little bit like... Um, it sounds like the original Roar, which, honestly, not insane about the original Godzilla Roar. Not my favorite Godzilla Roar by any means. I think my favorite will always be a tie between the classic 60s Godzilla Roar, the high-pitched Screeonk, that classic one, and then the kind of darker rebooted roar that we got in the 80s with Godzilla first starting off with the high-pitched scree and then going to this <clears throat> kind of this bellowing sound. I love, love that roar. Um, it worked perfectly for a darker Godzilla and I, I think it worked well with those films and I love that roar. You can hear it up until King Ghidorah in the 90s. That being said, their interpretation of that kind of thing Again, it works. I, I really want to see it in context because both times, when, when it happens in the trailer, the first part of it happens on screen and the the the, 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 latter, the latter bellow kind of happens off camera with the title screen popping up, which by the way, oh my god, I love the new Godzilla font and the new Godzilla logo. It's so fucking cool. 
Um, it just, it, it's, it's good. I'm not entirely sold on it. I want to see the full movie before I cast my final judgments. The more I hear it, the more I like it. But that being said, it's something I'll have to get used to. But easily, easily I will get used to it if it's the final roar. Um, or if it doesn't kind of have a variation. Because most Godzilla roars have variations. Like, they, Godzilla's a creature. He's not going to make the same sound over and over again. He has kind of variations depending on what's going on. Um, so we'll see in the trailer. Or in the film. Um, but I do like the new roar. I think it's, I think it's, it's a cool modern version. Uh, I, I don't think it's perfect. I think it's good. Um, I'd like to see where it goes. Um, but I do dig it. So, I'm kind of running out of things to say, honestly. Um, and the, the bare bones reason is, we didn't see a lot. I mean, I talked a lot about this stuff in the second leaked trailer video. And a lot of this stuff we either already knew or had already seen, which is kind of disappointed since this was a big deal. Um, but, at the same time, it was definitely cool to see the official good quality Godzilla trailer. And it was spectacular. This was a great, great trailer. Um, very distinct from other trailers that have come out for other movies in the past couple of years. Um, polar opposite with the previous Amazing Spider-Man 2 trailer, so great that they came out kind of at the same time as kind of a point of comparison. Um, but, uh, that being said, I, we'll wait and see. Wait and see is definitely, um, how I feel about, you know, what's going on with the specifics. The generals, the major brushed over points about how i feel about this movie incredibly optimistic this movie looks like the it looks like the perfect modern version of godzilla but it's the specifics that we'll have to see about um so i think that's gonna be all i'm gonna say in this particular video if you want to hear more of my thoughts on the godzilla trailer go check out world war g4 over at adam's trailer you can find that link in the description but if you haven't seen this trailer, oh my god, do yourself a favor and go watch it. It is fucking spectacular. Um, great, great teaser trailer. Well done, Gareth Edwards. Well done, Legendary. But again, as I said earlier, little late guys pick up the pace. But again, spectacular. You guys are bringing the real Godzilla to the big screen. I'm so fucking excited. Good on you, lads. So, with that being said, I think that's going to do it for this latest Legendary Pictures Godzilla update. Oh, whoa, losing my voice. Uh, sorry, excuse my voice, I'm a little bit sick. Um, as I said earlier. So that's gonna be my, that's gonna be it for my thoughts on the official Godzilla trailer. Thank you very much for watching. And be sure to look out for more Godzilla videos coming up as the, the release of the film approaches. Uh, look out for my Bondapalooza, which is coming in January. And look out for, a, for the video following this in which I uh, announce what I'm going to be doing uh, as kind of the Zazibar Film Productions Christmas special. So, with that being said, thank you very much for watching. I am Zazibar, and sayonara, fellow Godzilla fans.